When Din, Nehru, and Feyrar created the world, they left behind three dragons to act as protectors for Hyrule. These three dragons were named Eldin, Lenehru, and Feyron. This habit of the world being protected by three guardians, known as spirits, would continue throughout the future of the games. Even after Hyrule flooded, guardians arose to protect the fledgling, freshly evolved races of the Great Sea. Today, we'll be covering one of those guardians, in specific, the Great Dragon Valu of Dragonroost Island. Valu is a mighty dragon who lives on the peak of a volcano coming from from the aptly named Dragonroost Island, and he oversees the Rito people, serving as both their protector and object of worship. He is assisted by Link and in return assists him throughout his journey, providing him with valuable advice and even going on the offensive against Ganondorf. He's a very powerful dragon, and perhaps even related to other dragons in the series. Now let us once again crack open the history books of Hyrule and cover a topic that has a name so simple I finally don't have to worry about angry comments telling me I got the pronunciation wrong. I hope. On this episode of Hyrule History, we cover the sky spirit of Dragon Roost Island, the mighty dragon Valu. Valu is a gigantic red dragon. He's what's known as a European style dragon, as opposed to someone like Volvagia or the Breath of the Wild dragons, who are known as Chinese style dragons. European dragons generally have four limbs, a large body, and a very long neck, whereas Chinese dragons tend to be serpentine, with either no limbs at all or very tiny ones. The one difference between Valu and most European dragons, however, is that he has very small wings, whereas other European dragons have massive wingspans that often measure longer than their head to tail length. Baloo has red scales and a soft light brown underbelly and his tail ends in a large hook which explains the symbolism behind the use of grappling hooks in pre-flight Rito culture. He has a small fairy-like set of wings that don't really look like they'd be able to support his weight. He also has hair that suggests he's very old. He's also rocking that dragon dad bod working together with Mushu to prove that dragons can be badass at any size or shape. Hashtag dragon equality. Valu is the sky spirit for the adult timeline, and thus has guardian duties appointed to him by Din the Fire Goddess. He's worshipped by the Rito as a deity, and to this end he does everything he can to protect them. He only speaks ancient Hylian, which did not survive the Flood, and as such very few people can actually speak to him. The King of Red Lions can talk to him, as he obviously comes from before the Flood as well, and thus spoke ancient Hylian as his primary language. In Rito culture, however, the only people capable of talking with Valu were the grandmother of Komali and Medli, although to a much lesser extent. This is because it is customary in Rito culture for the Rito women to serve as assistants to Valu. Valu is likely very capable in combat, despite Goma sneakily getting the better of him. He showcases quite the firepower when he blasts flames at Ganondorf, and it's likely his hooked and barbed tail is not just for looks. Valu is a sky spirit, and thus can be considered to be a minor deity of sorts. This allows him some level of access to magical power. The most obvious example of this is in his scales. When a Rito comes of age and proves himself, Valu gives them one of his scales. Possession of this scale causes the Rito to grow wings, giving them access to the skies above. The fact that his scales possess the ability to grant a physical transformation is a very obvious sign of Valu's magical abilities. Secondly, he has some level of overall general magical ability which can be utilized in different ways. We know this because he's able to fly despite his wings being so tiny. Any other creature with that much mass would not be able to lift off without massive wings. However, Valu is a guardian spirit. And, as the Zelda Encyclopedia tells us, spirits have an astral form different from physical matter. So, if he's built of astral material instead of physical matter, it makes sense he's able to make himself fly regardless of his wings, which could very well be there only for looks. He's flying using magic, not through physical biology. The only instance of Valu found is in the adult timeline in Wind Waker. As mentioned, he inhabited Dragonroost Island, serving as the guardian of the Rito people and the sky spirit of the Great Sea. 
At some point in time, the evil creature Goma found its way inside Dragon Roost Island itself and latched onto Valu's tail, causing him a lot of distress. Valu began lashing out in pain. As Valu doesn't speak modern Hylian, no one could figure out what was wrong with him, as the only person who could understand him, Komali's grandmother, had passed away. His pain-induced tantrum had knocked boulders off the cliffs and onto the island below, crushing the bridge to Dragon Roost Cavern and plugging up the hot springs. Young Rito, who had come of age to receive their scale and grow their wings, such as Komali, were unable to do so while Valu was in this angry state. Eventually, Link, the hero of winds, comes to the island. With the help of Medley, he makes his way into the cave and defeats Goma, bringing much needed relief to Valu. Valu at first thinks that Link is the hero of time, but even when acknowledging that he is not, labels him a true hero. This is translated roughly through Medley, as Link does not speak ancient Highland. He gives Link advice for continuing his journey, and says goodbye goodbye to the hero, going back to being the guardian of the Rito and giving Komali his scale. Later on, Valu learns that Link is stuck and decides to help yet again. He gives the Rito named Quill the directions to the lair of another spirit, the water spirit Jabun. Quill delivers this message to Link. Eventually, it was brought to Valu's attention, likely through Quill, that Link and Tetra are going to be facing Ganondorf. Valu must have known that Link was woefully unprepared and immediately took off to Forsaken Fortress, with Quill and Kamali accompanying him. He arrives just in time to see Ganondorf take Link and Zelda out. Quill and Kamali save Link and Tetra, and Valu lets out a massive stream of fire onto the balcony where Ganondorf stood. Valu had officially returned the favor to Link, but did not feel very optimistic about his fire breath doing any lasting damage to Ganondorf, leaving with the statement, It is too soon for us to relax. Ganon cannot be destroyed by such simple means as wrath and fire. That's very unsmog-like of him. After this, we don't see or hear from Valu again. He's not seen for the rest of the game, nor is he seen in Phantom Hourglass or Spirit Tracks. Presumably, he just continued guarding the Rito on Dragon Roost Island. But what happened to him after New Hyrule was established? As of yet, it's lost to history. Valu has had two appearances outside of Core Zelda games. He appears as a sticker and trophy in Smash Bros. Brawl, and he has a sort of appearance in Hyrule Warriors Legends. The character Volga has an armor recolor called the Standard Outfit Great C, which matches Valu's color scheme. An interesting note about Valu is that he may have ties to Paper Mario. Valu looks strikingly similar to a character in the GameCube iteration, The Thousand Year Door. It's a dragon named Hooktail, and as you can see, they have a lot in common. The red scales with the soft underbelly, tiny wings, and even a hooked tail. Obviously, Valu is a good guy, whereas Hooktail likes to... eat people. But the identical appearance can't really be denied, and it's most certainly possible that Hooktail was inspired by Valu. Also, as a little aside, when you beat Wind Waker, a second playthrough allows Link to understand Ancient Hylian, allowing the player to understand what the Guardians, including Valu, are saying. The most popular theory involving Valu is his relation to the other dragons in various other Zelda games, particularly Volvagia in Ocarina of Time, but more broadly to Elden and Dinral as well. The evidence for Dinral is very weak, as we know so little about the Breath of the Wild dragons to begin with. There are some theories that perhaps the Spring of Power is located where Dragon Roost Island once was, and that Dinral is Valu's distant descendant, but there is very little in the way of actual proof to back this up. The idea of Valu and Elden being related is actually much more compelling. Physically, they look somewhat similar, sharing a large body and a long neck, as well as a long tail. Valu's eyebrows also look somewhat similar to Elden's weird fire ear things. They also both guard volcanoes, with Dragon Roost Island and Elden Volcano being very similar. But the real connection lies in their scales. The three dragons in Skyward Sword seem to have the ability to grant magic powers to people through the giving of one of their scales. Faron the Water Dragon, at the very least, is capable of that. 
and it is assumed, but not confirmed, that Elden would be able to as well. Obviously, Valu has the exact same ability, so it makes sense that this could have been inherited through a direct connection to Elden, be it a biological connection or a spiritual connection through Din. This theory has a few leaps of logic, and the whole case definitely rests on whether you can accept Elden having magical skills as well, but this theory definitely has more going for it than the relation to Dinral. The most discussed connection, however, as well as the most likely and official, is between Valu and Volvagia. If you google Valu Volvagia, you'll get pages and pages of threads of people arguing about whether or not they're related. The Hyrule Historia kind of confirms their connection, but it leaves it slightly ambiguous by saying that the Wind Waker spirits are thought to be descended from the Ocarina of Time spirits without outright saying it. That ambiguousness is why this is in the theory section instead of the timeline section. But I think that there's a lot of evidence, even outside of the Historia, that Valu and Volvagia are related. So let's take a look at that. To start off, what do they have in common? Well, they're both red dragons that live in volcanoes. The Legend of Zelda Encyclopedia confirms that Volvagia is technically considered a spirit, so they're both technically minor deities. But the most interesting connection can be found in Dragon Roost Cavern. There are many, many statues that look suspiciously like tribal depictions of Goron, but most damning of all, there are paintings of long, snake-like dragons that are found on the wall. While the color of the dragon is very different from Volvagia, its shape is very similar and the drawings look nothing like Valu. So what does this mean? Well, officially nothing, but I have an idea. What I'm suggesting is that perhaps Dragon Roost Island is connected to Ocarina of Time's Death Mountain. I know that was the leading theory before the encyclopedia confirmed that Zora's Domain became Dragon Roost Island, but maybe they meant Zora's Domain and Death Mountain become Dragon Roost Island. After all, according to the encyclopedia, apparently nothing happened with Death Mountain after the flood, and Dragon Roost Island was a volcano. Zora's Domain was wasn't a giant volcano, and it's hard to imagine a gigantic volcano just sprouting from the ground. But Zora's domain was at the base of a giant volcano, Death Mountain. Perhaps the Zora, who we know can't swim in the Great Sea, fled up the mountain as the water rose, and as they slowly became the Rito and slowly forgot of their Zoran origin, they began to find artifacts of the Goron who used to live on Death Mountain, and made art depicting what they thought these ancient people looked like. And perhaps there was a green dragon that was some sort of third dragon that lived on Death Mountain in between Valu and Volvagia that links them, and maybe the Zora worshipped this green dragon. This is is obviously 100% guesswork, but it seems plausible to me. There has to be some reason that a dragon that looks like Volvagia is drawn on the island where Valu is worshipped. At any rate, what we have with Valu is a gigantic dragon that, for once, is on Link's side instead of trying to eat him. Whether Link's ancestor killed Valu's grandfather may be up for debate. But what isn't up for debate is how memorable of a character Valu is. Pot-bellied dragons will always have a place in my heart. Thanks for watching another episode of Hyrule History. If you liked what you saw, subscribe and let me know. Is there anything you'd like to see covered on Hyrule History? And let me know in the comments who your favorite guardian spirit is. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.